everyone. I am Jeff and welcome to Bourbon Over Baseball. Uh, we're going to be continuing our chats with our team managers from our 2020 uh, set teams, our uh, 2020 custom set league. Um, like I said before, we, we did this with Nate of Ducks in the Pond, kind of a throwback to old Bourbon Over Baseball. If you look back in our uploads, um, which man, there's some there's some fun throwbacks there. I mean, it's only a few years ago, but it feels like freaking ages. But uh, Bob used to bring on the teams. They're fun listens. I mean, it's, it's fun to listen to kind of hear, uh, especially back then, you know, what how our strategies are different how things change um, I was kind of thankful I didn't have one because it would have been kind of brutal to listen to but um, doing it with uh, all the teams that we have in the league now so I'm um, really happy to bring, bring on Kyle here who is representing his team of the Oakville Trojans so what's up Kyle hey not much Jeff how you doing today Good, good, man. So, so story, I, I guess I can give the long story, long version, you know, or short, hopefully, um, you know, we got you looped into our, you know, into our craziness, you know, pretty, uh, you know, not long ago, um, the timing super worked out, you know, just cause we were just finishing up one of our, uh, we were finishing up our 2001, uh, national league team, uh, only league. And you just, kind of said, Hey, I'm down. I want to play some games. Let's do it. TTS looks good. And you know, the timing worked out that we were able to get you tied into uh, the current league we're doing. So. Absolutely. And, you know, happy to be playing in it. Um, definitely bringing back a lot of the uh, nostalgia and, you know, happy to be here. Heck yeah, dude. Um, I guess take, you know, before we even talk about your team, the draft, all of that stuff, um, talk us through just you, you know, your showdown fandom, like what do, you, what do you remember from when you were a kid? I mean, um, the one thing I should mention right now is, you know, we just kind of started talking. Comp I, I'm not even, how do you, do you remember how you found the discord? How did you get there? Yeah. So uh, do you want me to start at the beginning of showdown or just with this discord? Well, let's, let's do the discord. And then I want to, I want to even sure. tell the fun, the, there's a crazy aspect of this too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Discord I found, I, you know, every few years, I really get that itch for showdown. Um, you know, and I just started looking stuff up online, um, stumbled upon the um, blog, Greatest Showdown blog. And I've been there before, I actually read some articles and everything. And somehow that led me to like a Reddit. And then I saw the Discord link in there, or maybe it was Facebook and then the Discord link. I don't remember the exact order. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought, you know what, I, I'm in a few discords already. Let me go on. Let me check it out, see what's going on. And then, you know, right from there, I saw the TTS stuff and thought immediately, let me get involved in this. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can play. Yeah. And then, and then long story, you know, fast forward, long story short, you're, you're in our leagues now. And the, the completely wild part of this is like everything you just said there, you could be, you could be in Seattle. You could be in Austin, Texas. You could be in the, across the world for that matter. Like you just had that itch. You played as a kid. I will get to that. But um, the wild part of this is, is that like where you are sitting at this exact moment is like literally three miles from my house from where I'm sitting. So um, all of a sudden we were talking like, like, Oh, you're, Cleveland Mayfield Heights another Cleveland person this is great you know we always talk about our our Cleveland against the world the, you know the Cleveland being the showdown uh, mecca of the U.S. which I firmly believe because here's my uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to get up on my soapbox comparative to our, our re, like our metro, uh, metropolitan size the amount of showdown fans we have versus that compared to like even the east coast and west coast it does we have so many more fans here it seems like or at least fans that have continued being fans of the game and um, I think a lot of it's attributed to the uh, you know the Indians being very good in the 90s and um, but uh, but yeah dude it was it was wild figuring that out that you were not far from me so yeah, I couldn't believe it when I started talking to people and it's like, oh, you're in Cleveland, you're in Cleveland, you're in Cleveland. I, it was <laughs> unbelievable to me that, you know, like you said, about half the discord is Cleveland and half is not Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, I was I was like, dude, you're like you're like 15 minutes from Bob. You're like maybe 25 minutes from Matt, um, you know, and then, you know, Kevin is in here. He's over in Lake. It's just yeah, it's just wild. So um, that was a, an incredible surprise. And I, I imagine, you know, you know, once uh, the world comes back to normal, we can finally start, you know, playing some of these league games in person, especially you and I being in the, uh, in the same league, I think we're going to, or the same division, we're going to have a lot more games against each other. Um, but, uh, but yeah, take us back, you know, take us back to playing showdowns as a kid and kind of like, you know, 
that like what your memories are of that and how it got you here yeah um definitely got to attribute it to one of my friends jared um he had an older brother and um he was a big time magic player and so you know he got me and jared into it too we played a little bit um sports has always been my first love though so there was a local card store near me um i'll shout him out mr cards and comics Oh, hell yeah. Um, still go there. Yeah, yep. I still go there. No joke. I like the amount of, especially when I started sleeving everything, the amount of sleeves and card boxes I bought from them during the pandemic was like a little alarming, you know, uh, I think to them, to my wife, to me. Uh, but yeah, they, they're, they're an incredible shop. Love them to death. Absolutely. Um, but we ju- were just there one day, you know, picking up some packs of magic or whatever. And we saw this game on the shelf, MLB Showdown made by, you know, Wizards of the Coast, same as Magic. And we thought, ah, you know what, starter's only a few bucks. Let's just buy it. We'll try it out, see how it is. And uh, that's where the love began. Um, you know, I was probably, so the first set was 2000. I was, you know, 12, 13 at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and just played throughout the entire existence of the Wizards version. Um, Mr. Cards and Comics also had, they used to have a tournament every Saturday and it was $5 to enter. It was usually, you know, winner take all. So every Saturday, me and a few of my friends would ride our bikes up to the Mr. Cards and Comics, sit down, play, you know, showdown for two, three hours. Um, I only won one tournament and I will say I, I had won enough where I could choose a box, brand new sealed box, or I can get Barry Bonds. And it was the, I think it was the O2 or O3 bonds, the 16 on base. Mm-hmm. And because I had so many of the cards already, I did opt for the Barry Bonds. Do you wish they put it in the lineup? I think if that's, uh, is that like, that's like the crazy valuable Barry Bonds card, if I remember correctly. Is that right? The 2003 version? I'm trying to remember. That I'm not 100% sure on. Um, I'm, I think it is. Because I think. It. I think it's, well, it's either 2002 or three, like they're both pretty valuable, but I think the 03 one. So, you know, it's funny. I was about to say, get the sealed box, get the sealed box, you know, like screaming at, at Kyle as a kid. But yeah. um, also that's like a, the fact that you won the tournament had a choice between those two is pretty fantastic, but yeah, you're right. You just throw bonds in that lineup and then you can just go just bananas. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it looks like I'm looking it up right now and it does look like it's the 03 bonds and there's an eBay listing for 260 right now. Yeah, I think that's that one. That one's pretty. Uh, that one. So, that, like, funny enough, that was like looking back. That was actually a good decision, <laughs> you know. But, um, but like, you know, I'm sure you've moved on from those cards and everything, and um, and all that. But, um, yeah, that it's it's so it's so funny because I don't. I remember I had a shop that I bought a ton of Showdown stuff, and they were really cool to me. Um, it was down in actually is in Newbury, Ohio, and it was a place called Diversions, which is still open somehow. Um, mm-hmm. Cards and Comics is like legitimate, feels legitimate, like well run, like very clean. Love Diversions, but man, it's a uh, it is a time warp. Like you just don't know which year it is when you walk in, and there's you can smell the cigarette smoke that's been in there for 20, 30 years, just still there. Um, but I don't remember playing in many tournaments. I remember playing with friends and. Um, man that's yeah it's it's wild they like basically fast forward 20 years now i'm playing in tournaments not really any money or anything but you know it's 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 funny the way you bring it up with you know again being in sports and i've said this before but you know the fact that i think it was like a perfect storm for like our generation and i think you and i are almost the same age but you know pokemon started created the craze sports were big especially here in cleveland around that time period and then it was just like this again this like this perfect situation where like showdown kind of just started existing and like it clearly like hit a nerve with all of us so um you know i've i've said multiple times how like so many people kind of got to the game in a different way um but it's amazing how it's even still continued for this long. So anyway. Yeah, it's unbelievable, you know, and to find the custom cards that, you know, you guys are making and everything was, um, was a lot of fun. Um, I have, I don't even remember what year it was, but maybe 07 or 08. There was somebody still online making custom sets at that point. Um, and, And I had stumbled across it. And I actually printed out like the cards on cardstock just so I can like try to play. 
Right. Um, <laughs> and That's... I stumbled across some of those a few weeks ago um, and couldn't believe they were, you know, still dude, there. <laughs> dude, you got to, okay, right now, I'm saying this right now, you have to send me pictures of those because I absolutely want to upload those and I can like throw them in the description for anybody that wants to see them. Because like, I know that there were custom cards like made by like Colby and another buddy of ours, Matt P., um, from like 2012 to 2015 or so like they actually have some great sets like 20 they have a 2014 set that is just awesome uh, you know just super awesome and um, I didn't know of anything kind of late 2000s like right after the game and and you kind of see that like especially with games being kind of uh, discontinued um, you know there's a game I used to play um, called Star Wars Destiny it's like a it's like a card and dice game and Star Wars theme which again just sounds so up my alley and it it was <laughs> you know rolling dice that represent Star Wars cards like it sounds it's a dream but you know they just got discontinued and you there's still a, a big crew right after it got discontinued recently that are making cards and even making the die which is a wild thing but um so it's funny to think about, I never really thought about in Showdown that, hey, it's done 2005. And then like, you still have those people, those fans around that late 2000s, late aughts saying like, well, no, we want to, we're going to keep making this game. Um, so yeah, you, you got to send me some photos of those. I'll definitely take a look to see if I might've thrown them out because I wasn't thinking, um, but I'll find that. But they were printed out on cardstock. And then my now wife, um, we were dating at that point. She just used like uh, the crafting Mod Podge. I don't know if you ever heard of that. It's like a glue. Yep. She just like painted over them in glue to try to, you know, give them that card feel. <laughs> Did it work? I'll say somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fact that she was helping with like your showdown fandom is just fantastic. And like major shout out to her and all significant others that put up with us. Um, but yeah, no, the hodgepodge, that's like, I think that's like the puzzle glue. Like yes. we, we, we've, okay. So like, um, and we've done like, cause some of the cards, like whenever we just get them printed for ourselves, like just for us to use, um, you know, there's, de there's definitely like, you can, like we're basically doing the same that it's on cardstock and sometimes it's thick sometimes it's not um we've done things where you put a card behind it in a sleeve and it makes it feel a little bit more sturdy like i'm just like you know what that's so many cards like i'm just gonna just throw them in sleeves and go and i'm never really gonna notice and nobody does so right. um but uh but yeah but anyway that's awesome that's all great like we got you know you had that itch like you said kind of and just happened to search it out and um Hell yeah, that's 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 worked out. I would say, you know, just for everybody, for yourself, for me, for our league to get you involved. So, absolutely. Uh, let's let's talk this league. So, um, first thing, like 2020 set, um, it was new to all of us, but you know, because we all just wanted to try a new set and learn the cards. But um, it was definitely new to you. Knew that hey, customs are you know, you knew customs existed, but at least not the customs that we've been using and our our, our buds have been creating. But um, you know, I guess like talk us through your thoughts. Like you started looking at the 2020 set, you started formulating a strategy. Like did that strategy, did you just kind of have that even before you looked at a single card where you kind of started to formulate it once you saw, like, I, I I'm trying to remember where your pick was. Um, you were, you were the fifth pick. So you had a, you had an early ish pick, but not crazy. Um, I guess like, yeah, just talk us through like everything kind of prior to the draft, uh, with your team. Sure. Um, looking at the custom set was definitely um, eye-opening to me. Um, I, I played 01 and 2000, um, but I definitely played the 02 to 05 a lot more, mm -hmm. um, played in a lot more tournaments, um, was a lot more competitive with that. So going back to these, you know, lower on bases and everything and the lower outs on the pitcher's charts was definitely, you know, I needed a shift in the mindset a little bit. For sure, 100%. Um, to get used to that. So my strategy just going in was just to get, try to maximize the on bases that I can. And then my pitchers just try to have high controls and high inning pitched, especially with this 2020 set. A lot of the starting pitchers, you know, were six innings or less. There were only a few with seven innings. Um, and I knew I wanted at least one of those and mm -hmm. I was able to do that in the first round. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because 
well, the 2020 set, we, again, we've said, said it a zillion times. It's a, it is a bizarre set. And you're absolutely right that the, there is not a lot of guys that have like, we that have uh you know, six or higher innings pitched on their card. I mean, we think of like 2000, 2001, and even I'm sure 03 through 05, like, um, that was not unusual. Like that was actually pretty standard. It was pretty weird. If you had an IP five guy, you're like, huh? Like, right. you know, this is weird. Like they go six innings. That's like what they do. Um, at least unless they're getting blasted, but, um, I mean, I'm, fa- I'm jumping forward, but yeah, you got, you got three IP sixes and one IP seven. And I'd say that's extremely unusual, um, you know, for our league and definitely something you were focused on. Um, but um, I mean, I'll, I'll go through some of like your just your first. I mean, your first three picks, like your five, 20, and 29 picks were uh, Trevor Bauer, Dias, Dallas Keuchel, and Lucas Giolito. Um, that's, I mean, that's a that's a shit ton of points just in the pitching. And it's funny because you and I have talked about this. Like, my strategy always in the past that I have had success with and why I've deviated from it, I have no idea because um, I'm having no success lately is, you know, just, just lights out starters, starters that in the, from one to four, you can just trust to win the game. Like I think having a four starter that could be someone else's one starter means you're doing pretty well. Um, and then just kind of working around that. Um, and it, yeah, and you were, you were doing that basically. I mean, your fourth is, is a little drop down, but still goes six innings and goes deep. Um, but, um, but yeah, I yes. mean, you got, or go ahead. I was going to say, so the plan with that, um, I was just going to try to draft three starters who are, you know, just real good, can win me games. And out of every four games, I'm just expecting to lose that fourth game Mm -hmm. with my fourth starter, you know, and Kyle Gibson, who, you know, he probably wouldn't start on most teams. He'd probably be your ace, Jeff, but... (laughs) Um, <laughs> he would he, actually I look at him and I'm like, he's not too bad. I kind of like him, you know, so he would have, he would, he would absolutely fit into my rotation for 80 points. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's kind of the approach I took with the bullpen too, was, you know, I got Bauer, Keuchel and Giolito. They're all control fives. Bauer goes seven innings. Okay. I can pitch him in a control four in the eighth and a control three in the ninth, if I wanted and Keuchel and Giolito, same thing down to the four and the three. Um, so when I drafted my bullpen, I drafted Diego Castillo and Jose uh, Snero, mm-hmm. the, um, or the control fives for that same reason. Okay. If I need to go to the bullpen, I could use Castillo for one or two innings. I could use Cisnero for one or two innings in those games that I need to win. Mm -hmm. And if one of those starters, one of my first three starters gets blown up, then I'm probably not going to win anyway with my hitting. So I'll just throw out my 10 point relievers just to eat up innings. Um, But even then, you know, their control twos, most of my starters are still going to be better until they get to that control one. No, that's, and it's funny because looking into the draft, like you, you got the three starters, then you kind of went on a, uh, you know, somewhat of a value spree, you know, kind of getting guys that were probably um, at least you're getting a lot for what you're paying. You know, your fourth pick was Paul DeJong. He's 140 point shortstop, but he's, he's a great card for 140. Um, and then when you got to like middle of the draft, that's when you picked three tens in a row. And I think that was around the point I was like, dude, Kyle, you got to you got to get, you got to get a reliever. Cause I, I know from like experience that um, the biggest variable of having four incredible starters is you, you kind of think in your head, like, Oh man, I I'm, I can probably punt on relievers. Like I'm probably not going to need them. Even if these guys go deep, but what ends up happening is that, you know, sometime kind of to your point, like Kyle Gibson's going to be lights out, but like Giolito or Keuchel are going to blow it um, and just get rocked. And, you know, you're going to have to go there. So that's when I was like, dude, dude, like I'm like getting nervous for you. And then that you immediately got Castillo and Cisnero who are both really good, but, um, but, but yeah, so let, let's, let's actually take a look. I, I've got the starters here because we were talking about it, but let's talk, let's take a look at the lineup. Um, the, I mean, there's some, Basically, like I said, you you got a lot of the kind of the good value guys in the middle. Um, and there's a lot of on-base eights that I do really like here. Um, and then towards the, I mean, your last four picks were really your big, your big batters. Um, your last four picks were Donaldson, uh, Robbie Grossman, Brandon Belt, and Nick Solak. Um, what Solak isn't crazy, but I mean, he's a, for 240 uh, speed A, uh, like on-base eight, like you've, there's really not, it's funny to, I think when we talked about this team, um, you know, kind of in our recaps, 
Um, there was nothing shouting out to me about this team. And now that I relook at kind of look at it through a different lens, like it's not that there's anything wrong, I guess. And like, tell me what you think here and tell me if you just, you know, wildly disagree, but um, it doesn't feel like there's enough. There's like Brandon belt is just kind of like, you know, feels stale. He's fine. Donaldson, same thing can mash if he needs to. Um, I feel like, like every lineup I'm looking for, like those one or two guys to just kind of like be like, I'm the flag bearer. Like I'm taking this lineup to the next level and winning some games for my guys. And maybe that's Brandon Belt, but I'm not like seeing that guy here. So tell, kind of walk me through the lineup though and tell me I'm wrong though. I wish I could tell you you were wrong, but um, I do agree. <laughs> um, the plan was to be pretty solid one through nine. Um, and kind of go a little old school baseball, even though I did not draft speed at all. Um, but just to, you know, get guys on, hit some singles and everything. And I just wanted to set myself up with the higher on bases overall to try to get that advantage. Right. Which um, I like, I, I'll say there, like a lot of on base eights and on base eights are fine. I, I've, I've, you know, changed my tune on on base eights and a lot of the on base eights, um, can hit hit well single pluses early things like that so sorry i didn't yeah. mean to cut you off oh no problem um you know through a few games obviously you know a guy like nick solak has gotten the advantage a lot of times and pretty sure he's leading the league in own chart outs but that's a whole other thing <laughs> well yeah we we got to mention that so like you and i played our first two games by all means you so trevor bauer just it was a trevor bauer game nothing I could do, even with my incredible lineup. I think I got the advantage one time and that was with a mistake pitch. There was no, you know, he's a control six or he's a, sorry, he's a control five and my high on base mashers just didn't get the advantage. So it didn't matter. So I lost that game like that. You took that one handily. Um, second game though, um, you had, I mean, given I'm looking at your team, like there, there's, you have um, one guy with a one to three out, um, couple one to four outs, a lot of one to fives and then two one to sixes, which are brutal like the six out is just the worst thing but the huge you know i gotta say but stop you know whatever the amount of own chart outs you had in that particular game and really you've had is in the season so far doesn't make any freaking sense um i mean i watched it happen that you should have won that second game and instead your team in pivotal situations were just blowing it and just rolling ones and rolling threes and it was, it was disheartening to see, because truthfully, usually I'm on that side of things. And I just like know what that felt like and how just that was like zero fun at that moment. So, so yeah. Yeah. You know, and the data side of me, um, it's, it's going to turn around. So 100%. it can't happen like that all year. I hope. <laughs> um, no, it can't. Yeah, it can't. So, you know, we'll start to turn things around, but you know, like you said, I just, I wanted to have everyone on my team have a decent chance to get the advantage and get on base. Now, like you said, they're not going to hit a ton of home runs. Um, you know, I think a few of the guys. I think, like, yeah, Don I, mean, I think Donaldson, like, that's the thing. So, like, it's funny that strategy because um, I've also tried that. Like, just I had a lineup. I remember it was a, it was two, we did 2000, 2001 together. It was just a little mini season. And I just tried out this strategy of just like, give me the highest on base guys. And I think my lineup had like four tens and five nines, but they just, they all didn't, they just didn't hit for power. They're like, they were almost like Nick Solak's chart, just like even like, or rather like even Paul DeJong, lots of walks, lots of singles, barely doubling early and like some homers. And, um, what I realized is like, there's gotta be that you can have those guys, but you like, you got to balance them in between, um, like a Donaldson who can just like eventually hit a home run. And I know you can't plan on that just cause it, it still kind of rarely happens, but, um, and I, I agree with you that I think it will, be, I think it will su substantially bounce back. Cause I really like looking at this, like, I really like your on base eights. Like I really, I Grossman and Grisham are great. Solak or uh, Rares are great. Um, even Stallings is like not, I mean, the one th probably the, that's my least favorite eight out of these just because he's one to six out, um, 18 double. But, um, I, I think that it's really what do you do for the what is your batting lineup? Do you know off the top of your head? Yeah, so, um, so I've been batting Solak leadoff, uh, Grossman batting second, and then Belt third, Donaldson fifth, and then I've been batting Grisham, um, sorry, Grisham fifth. So Solak, Grossman, Belt, Donaldson, Grisham, Arez, DeJong, Stallings, and then Victor Reyes. 
Okay. Let me, let me see that. Cause like, it's, I'm looking at belt. Like I like belts card belt. It's funny. That card is just like the ultimate 10 on base. Great batter card. Like, I feel like we've seen that card like a thousand times now, you know, but sure. double is 16 is still pretty great. I think the five to 11 walk is rough just cause even when he gets the advantage, he's just like, he's probably walking. Um, and I, I, I think like, cause you are getting so like engrossment on base so they can hopefully steal second so that Brandon Bell can just roll that 20 or that 12, excuse me, hopefully 20, but roll that 12 um, and get them home. I, I think makes sense. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, 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 that's the thing. I just, I, it should, it should work. And I think it will work. I think you've just had some just really bad luck in the first four games. Um, but um. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, like we said, I mean, this was probably the, uh, the part that this and like some of the bullpen worried me the most. Um, not that there was anything wrong with the lineup, but just more that, um, you know, just, just getting that, like maybe Donaldson just become superhuman. And like, I think that's like the hope, like I've seen like, like Kevin, like Raleigh fingers, he has like, he has like four on base eights that are like 400 points and. Um, the reason I love that so much is like two of them will be fine. One of them would be bad, but one of them is just going to go a bananas and become like a 600 point card. Um, and like, basically that's what we're all hoping for in a small sample size is that somebody who doesn't, it doesn't make any sense of their, you know, they just start becoming, you know, they become captain America on this team, you know? Well, and it's funny you say that too, because one of the cards that you didn't like was um, Jacob Stallings and, you know, he's leading my team in like everything. <laughs> I really, I, I have, to, I like, I get the catcher plus seven is great. And I think for there, there was not depth of catcher, um, right. but man, take out the plus seven arm. I like, I, I hate that card. Um, yeah. I like that one to six out is rough, like 12 single 18. It's like, I just like, yeah, I don't, I just, even if I had the points and like 240 exactly to get a catch, I'm like, not sure. I would rather just, yeah, I don't know if I would do it, you know, it's, but that makes no sense. You know, that's fair. And um, I completely get that. I'm just, I'm looking at the stats now. He's hitting 385 to lead my team, two home runs, two doubles. <laughs> so, oh my God. Has he gotten mistake pitches? Like, or is he like hitting actual like 19, 20 home runs? Yeah, so he's gotten two mistake pitches. So that might have been his two home run. Maybe not though. I mean, I mean, probably one of them was a home run and one of them wasn't. And that's that's amazing. And the one yeah. thing that what's your if you're looking at the team right now, um, you've got a you've got a ton of guys with single pluses. Which I I was also I was trying to I mean the entire bottom row except for Donaldson, you've got Grossman's single plus at fourteen. You've got uh, Reyes single plus at uh, fourteen, which I haven't even talked about that card. That card's super great for two twenty. Um, yeah. Grisham single plus of four everybody basically everybody single plus is a 14 except for Solek at 17 but do you have have you been getting those guys on first like happen to be like is there I know that we the way we play single plus is that you you don't get the automatic stolen base or automatic second you have to steal but what do your stolen bases look like so I only have two on the year and they're both from Nick Solak. so he I mean that's that's not the worst he's getting on and then you know but I'm trying to think my catcher was bad and then who did you play second did you play Nate and, uh yes and i'm trying to remember i don't remember whose catcher is off the top of my head but i don't think he's anything extraordinary i don't think he's like better than a seven or six um so yeah well, that, that'll be i'm trying to look at it now and i, I don't remember do you remember his team name i'm so bad with uh, that <laughs> oh you're fine he's yeah he's ducks on the pond uh that's who i play this week oh, okay so you played you must have played nick i played nick week three that makes sense uh big dogs okay yes and he's got a seven catcher okay so that makes it that that's that's 14 or higher i usually go 14 or higher mm -hmm. i will send there's a reason it's funny uh tim lacastro uh we just i was talking with another buddy of ours who's been keeping track on the league and uh sending me some great stats um so shout out to kevin for that and another kevin but uh I, uh, I've, I think I've done six stolen base attempts with Tim LaCastro and he's gotten three and gotten thrown out three times. And I think in real life baseball, he had 50 straight, like, like stolen bases. It was something crazy number, like a number of stolen bases without getting thrown out. And the fact that my guy had been thrown out three times out of six already, like almost shouts that like, uh, maybe I'm a bad manager for sending him so much, but, um, it's also like, there's, especially with us doing kind of the the speed it's just straight 20 straight 15 straight uh 10 
usually we, I love that variability and you would have guys be like 22 speed, 23. And I think that's what Tim LaCastro or, you know, uh, maybe some of even your guys would have been, but you know, we just kind of, some of them get pulled down, some of them get bumped up, you know, that's just how it goes. Just a rounding uh, kind of a rounding game at that point. Absolutely. Let's uh, you know, let's, let's jump forward here. I want to show your starters again. Um, as we said, they're, they're, they're bonkers. Good. I mean, Bauer just shut me the hell down. Um, the Keiko card. I mean, the fact that you have your two starters is like 1200 points. It's like, you know, almost a, almost a fourth of your lineup. Uh, your salary is just my favorite. Cause again, it's like, it's tapping into like what my old teams were. Um, but uh, man, Keiko, Keiko would be somebody's one, you know, like, I mean, very solidly someone's one. Right. Um, and man, yeah, Giolito is kind of that standard, uh, you know, that control five out through 15, kind of the standard chart with walk single doubles. And um, I think Keuchel not having the doubles huge and, and even Kyle Gibson, man, like the, the, I've said about home run pitchers and you just pitch them until they do bad, you know? And <laughs> like, if he, and the fact that he can go six. So like, I mean, you're probably never going to get, you're probably not even going to get close to six with him, I would guess. Cause even unless he's, lights out no runs pitch him to six but like if he gets you know let's say he gives up four to six runs or something he gets knocked down to a night before i mean there you're depending on the game how it's feeling um and how you kind of said that you're that's your game that you're kind of conceding um you're right. pulling him early and then again that's where you're tapping into um you're tapping into cisnero and uh i can't remember the last guy but i'll show in a second but bowers going the distance or should um Keuchel probably will as well. I think he did against me. I think or you might have pulled him late. I think, um, and Giolito same thing. So, um, definite, yeah, definite interesting strategy there to just you definitely. I think I, I say without question, without checking it, you have the highest average starter innings pitched. Um, I don't think there's anyone anyone close to be honest. Yeah, you're probably right based on the 2020 set and how low those IPs were. Yep. Yeah. It's. I mean, most of them. I mean, my, I have a three, two fours and a five, I think. I mean, <laughs> my average is like four. It's really bad. You're like almost like close to doubling me basically, but again, more <laughs> points there, but, but let's take a look at the bullpen. Um, this was one of the parts that again, just worried me the most. Um, I actually don't hate these. Uh, it's, it's such a reversal for my team just cause like I punted on starters, but I have such an, I have an incredible relief staff. Um, whereas like you got the 10 point relievers. Um, but, uh, but like you said, like, most of those guys, like even if Keuchel gets down to a control two, he's going to be the same tier as like an Adam Morgan, um, you know, same. Yeah, he would be the same tier as Adam Morgan, which Adam Morgan for, for 10 is such an incredible card. But you're going to just pitch Keuchel at that point. Like there's like it makes sense. Now, the question is like close game. You're up by one run. Let's say it's it, let's say it's Keuchel. You're going into the eighth inning like is there situations where you're going to think about throwing Castillo or Cisnero to kind of lock the game down? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think the way I set up my rotation and I'm double checking here, I think Keuchel's actually my third starter. Oh, you're right. I faced Giolito. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. So I got Bauer first, hopefully, you know, rest the bullpen from the fourth starter. <laughs> right. Um, you know, use one of those guys if I need to Castillo or uh, Cisnero. Or and then, both. I mean, honestly, right. like, because you could still rely and say, okay, if Keiko needs to go deep, he can. I have relievers if something goes drastically wrong. And if something really goes drastically wrong, then you're probably throwing that game anyway. And exactly. then you, you then you have everybody clear for that, you know, for that fourth starter game. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if it's a close game with any of the first three starters, yeah, I'm pulling out all the stops. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's, I'm glad that like, what I've realized is like, it's fun. Again, your team, is, your team is so similar to what I used to do, because I had the four amazing starters. And then I remember I had out of my five bullpen guys, I had one incredible one, like a, a Diego Castillo, which that card is just bananas. Um, I had like a second, like pretty good guy. And then like my third was pretty maybe just a little bit like maybe like take your bullpen. I had a maybe an 80 point reliever, not a 10 pointer. Um, but yeah, it, it was it, like, those questions lighten the game of like, oh boy, do you pull him? Cause like, if, if like, 
if you pull him and then Castillo, let's say you want to lock down a game and you put in Diego and he just immediately blows the, like, you know, gives up runs. And it's like this question of man. And I know you start every, we all of us kind of think about like the future games, you know, I'm a big proponent of win that game right now. Um, Cause you're in it, you know, um, cause the dice gods won't be on your side when you want them to be, you know, but um, <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's, it's, it's it, it's definitely it's tough i mean it's like i remember playing that game in my head so often to try to figure out like um the balance and especially with us using uh, kind of uh more reliever rules um and you're seeing how like our whole league is kind of adjusted to basically put their um their great starters one and three and then their uh their lesser starters two and four just because then they pair up uh, they're better relievers with those two and four starters. So, um, so yeah, so it's been interesting. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, cause like we put them, we put these new rules to try to like basically limit everybody's innings pitch, which I, I, th- I think is happening. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm at the end of the season, I'm going to have to pull like, you know, kind of averages or totals and see if like it actually did happen or else we're going to have to start adding some more things in there. But I, I, I get the, the real, I, I talked to again, the, friend Kevin here who I was talking through this league with a little bit and just saying how like reliever rules reliever tiring is just like the most unfun rule to try to figure out because like if you make it too real it's just too many it's just too much to manage and it gets messy but if you don't do enough then it doesn't it doesn't follow actual baseball in any way it's just an arcade game at that point which I'm also okay with right it's it's a tough balance to find um that's for sure I I definitely like where our rules are now where, you know, if they pitch tired, then they can't pitch the next game. Um, And if they pitch two in a row, then they can't pitch the third, Um, which is nice. But like you said, you know, if we keep adding, then it's going to just going to be more to track. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's the only rule I've been thinking about lately. So like, I'll give you an example. So uh, Jesse Han, he's a tier zero. He's an, I think he's a control six out through 17. He's amazing. He's like probably the best reliever in the game um or in this in this set and i've been pitching him consistently like four or five innings every game he comes in Mm -hmm. and he's just out the next game which is fine um i know that some of our buddies played rules where the number of innings you go over you're out that many games in a row which again would if i pitch if i pitch jesse han four games he's out three games like that's a or four innings he's out three games that's a disaster i would never do that but um i think the one i've started thinking about is that we have the if you go over just just straight if you go over your set ip you're out the next and then we say if you pitch two games in a row regardless of innings you're out the third i think i'm starting to think that if you pitch two in a row and you go above your set ip in that second game um then you're out two games that's starting to be where my mind is at um that like they will compound it won't be a disaster but it's an i think it's enough to curb it that like basically in my situation i could pitch jesse han game one for one inning and then i could pitch him also game two but right now with our rules i could go as many innings as possible with him do you see what i mean and like if i knew he would be out two straight games then i probably don't do that to be honest um so yeah it's all tweaking and again like i'm like criticizing the rules like i i set these rules up you know like i i'm like i've been trying to like really nail it and figure it out and um it's almost leaning me more towards like i think there's a future league in my brain that's just so arcadey and just not regular baseball and just it just completely breaks how we look at these cards um and i honestly i i'm like i need to start like writing my thoughts down on that because i think that would just be a blast but Uh, absolutely you know like i love i love this my wife's old softball league used to do that if you walk someone they got to second immediately and i i kind of love that rule (laughs) and i like (laughs) i think we would all avoid walk guys pretty and like you would look at guys with like think of carlos santana like he becomes mike trout basically (laughs) so um but uh but yeah anyway but yeah like you know i i think like early on i i kind of when we went through these these uh division recaps um the draft uh kind of the draft grades and all that i think i was probably a little harsh on your team but um but yeah like i I, like it's just going to really depend on if the lineup will show up when you need them to like your guys are going to shut things down and your lineup has to show up and get hits and put together runs um because if they don't games are going to be close hopefully extras doesn't happen you know you're going to have to spend some of that relief staff and then um you know that money you spent on those starters could be you know could be wasted so right um so how do you, how do you view, I guess, how do you view your, what are you hoping from your team really? I'm hoping to finish above 500. We'll see if that happens. Um, I'm, 
I'm kind of wanting to win games like 3-1, 3-2. I'm okay in the close games because I know my team isn't going to score a lot of runs overall. Mm-hmm. Um, if I give up, you know, four or five runs in a game, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> right. No, 100%. Um, and that's what I'm really relying on that starting staff for. Um, so if I can win, you know, 3-1, 2-1 um, kind of games, I should be in good shape. Yeah, you should. You're probably going to have like as your diff, your run differential is going to be very close, or it should be. Mm-hmm. I mean, you probably will have the lowest runs given up as well as the lowest runs scored. Um, right. It's just going to depend if those turn into if those translate into wins. So, um, I know that our division, we you know, I think that I'm solidly on the bottom, um, or at least I'm, it's feeling that way so far. Um, I think I'm the, I, I was one and four at a certain point. I did win a game. And so I ended, I'm at two, four and two and four now, but I felt like I was the best one and four team ever just because my team was like in every game doing super well for the most part, but just the roles were not going my way, which hopefully bounced back. But, you know, Nick's team is like under the, under the radar, very good. But then we talked about how Nate Ducks on the pond is like, to me, like almost a perfectly crafted team. Like he just, he just found all of the little, the little nooks and crannies of, of, uh, you know, showdown things on these cards that just will translate to hopefully to wins for him. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, what do you, how do you view the rest of the division? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Um, so I played the big dogs already um, and his lineup worried me a lot, especially because I had to play him with my third and fourth starter, which Keiko was fine, but then I had to play him with Gibson, which did not go as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, so for everybody, he has, the big dogs have Soto and Tatis Jr. back to back. And that's, and he, then he also has other great like on base nines around them. So it's really scary front half of the lineup. Yeah. Um, I was pretty worrisome. <laughs> and then um, I played you and, you know, I thought I could have taken both of those games, but like we talked about earlier, the dice were definitely not going my way in the second game. Um, Right. I, I was lucky. Lo- I, I was lucky to win that second. I mean, you should have been, you should have straight been two and oh, I should have been oh and two, but we, I was lucky to split. Yeah. Well, hey, it's part of the game. At the end of the day, it's a dice rolling game and right. Uh, luck's definitely going to play a big part. Um, so as for Nate ducks on the pond, I play him. Um, I don't know when this is going to air, but um, from when we're recording, I play him tomorrow. Okay. Um, so this will be out probably. This will be out probably after then. But uh, okay. Um, Perfect. But, no, but so that's. I'll, I'll probably hop in and watch some of that. To be honest. Yeah, it should be uh, good. You know, because I got Bauer going in game one. But looking at his team, I mean, Cabrian Hayes is very good. <laughs> um, and then he's got you know 500 point Jose Iglesias, 520 Austin Slater. Um, those guys can do some damage to. No, uh, I mean uh, I staff. I, I don't think like, I don't think you'll have as much. I think like in theory, again, because you're going to, are you going to face them with your, you're going to face them with your, uh, with Bauer and Julito. Correct. Um, Bauer should shut his team down. Should like, like you've set up your team to actually have success against Nate's team, even though we think Nate's team is really good. Um, it's going to be, cause like I was literally with my starters and like, yeah, with my starter, I was intentionally walking to Brian Hayes because I didn't want to face him. Um, and then even with like one guy on, I was giving an extra on base to Bobby Dahlbeck, which was probably a terrible decision, but I just did not want to face Brian Hayes. Um, and, and uh, yeah, it, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't working out. So I, I, but I think like the way you guys match up, you have a great chance against that team. Like I, I, I think when I looked at Nate's team, I was like, I don't have any chance. I feel this could be really bad. Um, and yeah, it didn't go super well for me. So we had close games, but uh, they were great games. They were incredible games, but, um, and we'll, we'll cover We're probably going to do some quarterly updates. So um, we'll kind of go through some, some highlights, but um, you should, you should be in a solid spot with, with uh, in the matchup. So we're going to have to see. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Definitely, you know, looking at his team, it's going to be strength for strength. You know, my strength of starting pitching versus lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, heck yeah, dude, this has been great. This is great to have you on. Um, also we're doing this kind of in the morning. We should do, I should do morning podcasts all the time. Cause I'm a morning person and I could wake up at, I could wake up at seven o'clock, do a pod at eight every morning. And that's like, that's, I'm in like my happy place there. So, um, 
but I'm, uh, glad we're, I'm glad we're doing it a little later than that. That's uh, that's a little too early for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, you have children. I don't like. Yes. I'm probably the, if I were to have children, then I'm I'm sure that morning part of me is just going to be gone. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I guess uh, great to have you on, man. Great to talk through this. Great, you're in the league. I guess any last thoughts on your team and the league showdown in general? No, I'm just happy um, to be playing. You know, I know we talked a little earlier that I'm definitely more of a player than a collector and I'm just glad to be playing again you know even you know, I don't know if we talk about the other similar showdown type game around here that came out a few years ago um but I tried to play that a little bit too and just I had no one to play with oh we're talking um, clutch right yes clutch yeah which um, yeah, I uh it's funny like uh Bob was very into clutch um showed me some of the stuff I actually have one of their mats because their rubber mats are are fantastic and if, mm -hmm. go check them out if you don't know what i'm talking they 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 make showdown like esque like basically clutch mats that work for showdown um but the rubber they roll well it just feels great it's just a high a great a high end experience there um but yeah i he showed me he had a bunch of the cards cuz he was supporting those guys and i do really those guys are great i mean i i really like to support them and i i wish i did more but i'm just i just have trouble like i i kind of had to silo my vision to like 2000 2001 um right. you know just to kind of put my effort there but uh um but no they're those guys do incredible work and i highly recommend them to anybody who's looking for actual new you know currently developed uh showdown sure absolutely um but you know like i said i just didn't have anyone to play that with um yeah. but you know finding the discord and especially tts if there's anyone out there who you know just wants to play isn't you know always the biggest collector or whatever tts is awesome I highly recommend it for um, showdown, especially, but pretty much any game. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, um, I mean, I've pretty much only played it for showdown, but I've like seen the world that it kind of opened up for that. And, um, you know, I've, I've said this, anybody listening, if you're not in our discord, join the discord and, you know, come, come chat with us, come play with us. Um, go look at my videos where I talk through kind of how to set up TTS and the advantages of it. It's like playing in person. It's super close. I mean, like Kyle and I live three miles away, away and we're playing on this. And I think we will continue to do that. I mean, we're probably going to get back in person at some point, but um, I don't think TTS is going away for showdown anytime soon. No. And it's, it's very easy to, you know, set up a game pretty quickly. You can have, you know, lineups and everything saved for you already. Um, so you could just jump right into it. There's not a whole lot of setup or anything. Um, and like Jeff said, the discord has been awesome in helping me, you know, get running with it. And I'd be more than happy to help anyone else who, you know, just wanted to dabble in it or anything, um, Heck get yeah. started. Heck yeah, dude. That's great. Yeah. We, I know we all feel strongly about that, especially getting new people in. So, um, but, uh, but heck yeah. Well, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for keeping up in this league. Um, we'll have some more of these team interviews coming out soon, but, uh, yeah, this is Jeff signing off. We'll see you later, everyone.